All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, look, so with the recent chapters of One Piece lately, um, you, with the five act structure that's going into Wano, um, it's, it's becoming more and more obvious that this raid in Onigashima, um, it's, this isn't going to be the end of Wano, obviously, right? Like they're gonna have to leave. Um, whether they defeat somebody in the process or they defeat nobody have to go back to the drawing board, we have yet to discover. But it's obvious the raid is about to end, <laughs> excuse me, along with act three. So, and with these new reveals, there may be a clue as to why this raid is about to end. And it may not be the way we expect it to be because if the raid ends right, and this is the end of act three, which is the middle, if it ends what we expect, we expect it to end in basically failure. It's going to be because they're defeated, they're overwhelmed and they're gonna find a way to escape. So with the recent chapters lately, I believe we have some insight into how they may do it. Um, and if they are in danger, even in that aspect, how they'll get away, even if they're in danger. And it all involves one person. So first thing, this raid can very well be a smoke screen or, dis or a huge distraction, right? Or they could be trying to knock out two birds with one stone or they can have a backup plan, right? Because what first gave me this hint is in chapter 996, when we see Law at the Poneglyph by himself. Now, this comes in later. There's a few, so there's a few key things here. First, Luffy as a captain has learned about being overpowered, right? That's kind of his lesson. He keeps learning to be, he, he learns anytime he reaches a new height, whether it's be against a warlord and this and that, he kind of, he kind of finds out what it's like to be overpowered in that. He has, him and his crew have a lot to learn, especially right before the time skip, right? This is where he first learns this lesson. And with the Big Mom Pirates, he's learned this lesson as well, because the whole lesson was to basically get Big Mom hurt, but they never had an escape plan. But this plan after Big Mom, after it went, was always to escape, right? So Big Mom shows up in the prison, in Udon prison, and it adds a whole nother layer to defeating Kaido because they always wanted to defeat Kaido, right? And they have with the nine scabbards and the whole army, they're like, okay, we at least have a chance against Kaido. But I don't think Luffy may go for that, but I believe when Big Mom came in the picture, there may have been a change of plans. And also with Kinemon, right? We see how well Kinemon is great at planning because we see with Conjuro, right? With Conjuro. Conjuro, he, he had a feeling there was a traitor all along and he had a backup plan for when the guy betrayed him and basically to expose him and still have the plan going forward. So that could be another play because we have to realize, right? We didn't see them really into the, like to the days leading up to the raid. So we don't know what they really planned. We really, we see Orochi kind of tear apart the bridges and everything, but we didn't really see the original. We haven't seen if they made any adjustments to the plan with the army and everything. We really don't know. Um, so, and there could be another, there could be another factor we don't know about because there could be a plan to take out Kaido, right? And I know the question is why would they sacrifice this many people if the plan was always to eventually get out of the raid? And I, we don't know at that point, right? But this is why this is all in theory. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't, you know, like set in stone, not to be, not, you know, to have the Poneglyph's pun, <laughs> but, um, Okay, yes, I want to touch on Kinemon real quick because he's obviously known somebody has been betraying. There's been a traitor amongst the Nine Scabbers since Odin was alive, right? So that could be another part of the plan too, to where the raid, they could have been planning this raid outside of Odin, even way before um, they had the armies together. That's yet to be seen. We haven't really seen any flashbacks of the Nine Scabbers um, individually with their own story, which we probably won't get because there's so many of them. But um, that could be another part of it as well. Oh, yeah. So another thing, right? So I brought up how Luffy and the crew 
you know, they kind of learned a lesson about being overpowered and everything, right? And with Big Mom Pirates, they carry out this plan after Big Mom shows up as if Big Mom's not there, right? So even, so say, so yes, say if they don't know about the Alliance, Big Mom is still on that island. So they have to plan accordingly and they know Big Mom wants to wipe them out too. So what, so best case scenario for them, Kyle and Big Mom probably on the same team, but they see the Straw Hats and the Nine Scabbards and the, arm, and the army from Wano at the same time. And they see them and they both want to still take them out. That's the best case scenario. So I doubt that they saw Kaido and they're like, okay, we have nothing. And then they saw Big Mom and they're like, okay, well, this is our original plan that we have for Kaido. Big Mom and her crew is here. So let's carry out the same plan. I highly doubt that's the case. They will, they've had to have planned something else in between. And I think that's one of the reasons why we see Law by himself on the Ponic list. And I think Law's ability is going to play a huge part in it, right? And I'll get to, and I'll, I will get to that. Also, I want to talk about how Oda loves to use flashbacks, right? Because like I said, we already seen brief flashbacks of Orochi tearing out the bridges and everything, kind of knowing about the plan. And, and we haven't, and we didn't really find out through flashbacks how Kimon like flipped it on Kanjuro, on the eventual traitor who eventually is Kanjuro, right? So like I said, we haven't seen the days leading up to it yet. And Oda's more than likely going to show us that. Like he's not going to purposely jump several days and basically have a you know a montage a training montage of them going like that's not going to happen we're going to get flashbacks we're more than likely going to get flashbacks we're more than likely going to get a chapter or two a half a chapter or whatever to them having base either a backup plan or the whole plan was a distraction or the whole raid was a distraction for a bigger picture okay so here's my final here's the final point Right, so we see Law. We see Law at the Poneglyph by himself. So I don't remember. Somebody can can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't remember them knowing that the Poneglyph was underneath the castle. I was on on that island. I don't remember them knowing that. Um, but if they did, you know, why would they send Law right and everything? And maybe you can say I'm overthinking this, but let hit me out. So, Law is at the Poneglyphs by himself. He just found out how important the rope Poneglyphs are. And we see the flashback with him and Robin talking about them. And he wants to know the, you know, the inheritance will of D. So, the only reason why I can think of Law being down there is first. Remember in Dress Rosa when he was locked up in the Sea Prison Cuss, right? And after his fight with Doflamingo. And so he's in the cuffs and everything. And then after the whole adventure to the castle in Dressrosa, he says, it's actually probably a good thing I've been locked up in these same prisons so I can save my energy for the fight and use his room as he has to. So Law would be a big factor in this raid, right? And we didn't know Law was going to be down there by himself. We had no idea this was part of the plan. We didn't say, we didn't hear them say, Law, go find the Poneglyphs, blah, blah, blah. They did, you know, it's, it's a long chapter, but I don't I don't remember reading them say, specifically telling Law to go get the Poneglyphs, right? So we're already finding out about this side plan they have already, right? So he's down there, so they want Law to save his energy, right? So they obviously want him to save his energy because he's not in the fight. He's going to fight, he's going to find the Poneglyphs. Secondly, Law's room, Law's room can be a big part of this because he's at the Poneglyph, right? He can obviously copy it or anything, but here's here's where the ability might come. They could save his energy and they can either use his room to, to put the Poneglyph on the ship they brought here. They can use his room to put the Poneglyph on the ship they brought. Cause it's not, cause we know his room is big, right? It, it can stretch out for basically a whole island if he needs to. And that's where him being not being in a fight becomes a big factor. So he can either put the Poneglyph on one of the ship or he can use his room and literally switch everybody which may take a lot of energy but he can switch everybody basically use the shambles and put everybody on the ships including the Poneglyphs whether or not he'll do that I don't know but I think I believe his room is going to play a key part into this and why he's not joining the fight and they may use the Poneglyph 
as a trap they set for Big Mom and Kaido. And they may even tell Big Mom they have her apocalypse too. They may so this may so this may be, you know, part of the smoke screen. But that's basically my theories on how this whole raid can be a smoke screen. Um yeah, if you have any other thoughts about it, let me know. If you think it would just end in like complete and utter failure and everything, please let me know as well. But yeah, I believe just everything we've been fed so far, this is more than likely a smoke screen or they have a backup plan and Law is basically a key part to it. Which also, I want to say, Law hasn't really been a big part in this series. We Everything we've seen Law do has been behind the scenes for the most part, except his first fight against Hawkins. That's the only time we've really seen Law like in action. And the way Oda has written Law, he's basically written him as kind of <laughs> the fourth Monster Straw member. Even before Jinbei, he's kind of he's written him in that way to where he's kind of like the secondary main character next to Luffy. Almost the entirety of the second half up until Whole Cake Island, obviously, right? But up when we meet him at Punk Hazard. Um, up until Dress Rosa, he's basically the secondary main character. And then we have Hope Cake Island, which brings us back to a Straw Hat focused story. And then we're Wano, it's mostly about the Night Scabbers. But I think the way he's written large character design and everything, Oda, Oda is not gonna let him, um, like, you know, do nothing throughout this arc, especially in the raid, where we're seeing all of us, everybody have their moments and everything, right? Even Yamato's had several moments. So for long, not that moment yet, this is coming. And I, and I believe there's a high chance this will be a big moment. All right, well, let me know what y'all think. Um, comment below. And, you know, if, if you if you subscribe, and if you subscribe and thumbs up and like the video, it help me, you know, build up uh, production value and everything and all that. So you all see how people do. So thank y'all. Um, share this video and let me know what y'all think in the comments.